welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up people, what's up people, what's up people, it is your boy, MM2K, back again. And I'm so ecstatic, baby. Back again with the NRO podcast, y'all. Yeah. All right. So here's what's going on, man. Um, just to give everybody a brief reminder, I had alluded to that we are going to be doing some new things um, in November, right? Particularly around November 1st. All right. Let me just pull up the podcast and all that other good stuff. Right now, make sure I got the volume down so y'all can't hear the feedback. Everything looks fine and dandy. All right. So, um, here's what's happening. I am going to be doing the uh, podcast on a weekly basis. This one, the NRO podcast. And here we're focusing on hardcore gritty content. We're focusing on... Um, Anime and martial arts, but more or less in, in the realm of gaming a, as we kick it off in November. All right. And we started this channel a few months back, but really couldn't get into the anime and the martial arts. I finally been able to ink some deals with some people that specialize in those areas. So we got some great, 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 great content coming um, to complement our already fantastic content over at Triple B. Check out Big Gamer Small Talk for the direct Triple B channel. You know, you can catch your boy there and also the fantastic work that we do at PNTS Network. You know what I'm saying? So come on, come on, come on over. Enjoy all this gaming content, you know, because one of the things that bothers me, right, is that uh, I hate getting into a situation where um, I'm listening to all this gaming content. I can't find anything else after I'm done with the two or three shows that I might find entertaining, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and informative. And then I'm ass out till next week. You know what I'm saying? So, um, if you feel like you're in one of those situations, we definitely with those three networks, triple B PNTS, and now a heart knock digital culture where we plan on, Dousing you with enough content to keep you going throughout your gaming week. I know when I was in office, opposed to working from home, I prefer <coughs> to plug in my headphones and just listen to gaming podcast after gaming podcast after gaming podcast. So if you find yourself in that same realm, you definitely um, want to check out all of our content. All right. Big up to Heath Stevens in the chat. I need to do something else to make sure that I catch everybody. Do I catch everybody? Let me see. I restream chat up. I don't miss a single person. All right. And if y'all can do me a huge favor too, tweet this out, man. Let everybody know that we here. Uh, we're going to have a fantastic podcast. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with this podcast, again, we focus mainly on um, hardcore gaming. All right hardcore gaming content of the likes things like a you know what i'm saying a gears five or days gone or if you in a multi-plat realm a division two or um, a metro you know stuff like that just to name some games that came out in 2019 and i definitely want to talk about that because we've had a lot of games that within 2019 did not get his just due okay they got shitted on <laughs> for me to put it kindly. And I, I, I don't understand why. Um, well, I didn't know. I'll put it like this. I didn't understand why. Now I do. And I wanted to share some interesting things to those of you that probably didn't understand why those games got shitted on. You know what I'm saying? Including Days Gone. You know what I mean? Um, it seems like that hardcore gritty games are under attack, but the, the biggest thing that I wanted to focus on right now, while, um, also preparing the channel for some of the new features that we, we're going to have. And one of those new features is we're taking live calls, baby. 
So you know what I'm saying? While we're preparing for all that good stuff, um, I wanted to also talk about uh, um, Game Pass. Okay, um, Game Pass is been under it's, it's 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 a very polarizing subject matter, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? Very polarizing subject matter. Big up to Platinum, yo, yo, yo. Devin got the box. Big up to you. Big up to Heath Stevens. Again, do me a huge favor. Tweet this out. Let everybody know that we live. And we're taking live calls. I'm taking live calls at... Boom, 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 boom. Blizzard, yeah, man. Blizzard, uh... <laughs> Blizzard, uh, sucks, man. Blizzard sucks. Taking live calls. Okay, let me make sure I add that. Taking live calls at... And I just want to tweet this out to a couple of places. Then we're going to get started, man. Uh, I'm going to save that. Save. Um, and then also, too, if you guys can... Um, Help out the channel. You know what I'm saying? We ain't been blessed with the super chat yet. But you can still help out the channel. Leave me a comment in the loot section. And I will definitely get to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it helps out the channel tremendously. And it doesn't cost you a dime. That's the beautiful part of it. It doesn't cost you a dime. So, um, let's get into it. Okay, let's see here. All right. So, we got a good, and then also I'm going to big up to Devin, and then somebody else left me a voicemail too, um, and then we're going to get to the voicemails, and then we're going to get to the live calls. I do want to tweet this out, so let me do this real quick, guys. Hold on, I, I deeply apologize. Um, but let me just tell you what my gaming week has consisted of and why it needs to change. My gaming week has consisted of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. But that has to change, y'all. That has to change because, not because I, I, anything bad with the game. I, I still love the game, but I got Borderlands 3. I got Greedfall. I got a bunch of other games on the periphery that I need to get to. Um, for these reviews and stuff like that that I want to do for y'all. And I can't do that if um, I'm just focusing on Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And, and, and one of the main reasons why I had to focus so much on that game is because um, the streaming aspect of it, for lack of a better term, has been shitty. It's another way to put it. It's been shitty. Um, and it's been disappointingly shitty, right? Uh, what they failed to do in the optimization of the game, and big up to, to my homie 706 Gamer in the chat, what they failed to do in the optimization of the game is they failed to uh, take into, a, you could tell they failed to take into an, 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 an account streaming, you know, as far as optimizing their game. And it's about time, I love Ubisoft games. I changed my name to the Ubi the Ubi Samurai Warrior, but you know, I even for things that I'm biased towards, I can admit when they fucked up. And they've severely messed up with Ghost Recon Breakpoint as far as optimization is concerned with streaming. It it streaming is such a big thing right now. And because streaming is such a big thing, they should not they should not be making a game that sucks up so many resources that you got to play where in the world is Carmen San Diego as far, as far as finding a reasonable setting that'll have it buttery smooth. Especially if you're somebody like me that got a $1,200 PC that I just bought at a 2070 in it. Like, come on, bro. Like, stop this i7-8700. I mean, I'm not dealing, you know, it ain't the most powerful PC in the world, but it's more than powerful enough to stream these games in 1440p, even in ultra. You know what I'm saying? I got to bump my stuff to medium settings with this game. And, and <laughs> it still doesn't work. 48 frames, I gotta, I gotta settle for 48 frames per second, medium settings, and it still doesn't work. That's unacceptable to me. You know what I mean? So, um, you gotta do better, Ubisoft. I love you. I've signed up for the service, 
Um, y'all probably are watching this right now and said he we ain't gonna accept him in the service. And what service am I talking about? I'm talking about the Ubisoft um I forgot the faction club or something like that, where you uh pretty much advertise the um you pretty much advertise what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? And you talk about what they're doing. I don't maybe advertising isn't the right word. Um you pretty much talk about what they're doing, you give your uh um you give your your thoughts on the product, which is Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and you try to educate people that may not be educated that might accidentally fall into the idiot herd, you know, inadvertently or advertently, um, and, and maybe misinformed about the game. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I think there is a lot of that. But again, you you. Ubisoft games shine on PC. There's no reason why the optimization is just poor. I'm just about done tweeting this out, and then we can get into the thing of getting to the topics of today. Uh, write something. Okay, let me see. Um, I don't like how Twitch. I'm complaining about everything today, man. I don't like how Twitch, when you're. What the hell? Oh, my God. I don't like how Twitch um, does their their notifications. Like they don't grab your, they don't grab the titles. It's, it's nothing. It's so goddamn janky. It's ridiculous. All right. Grab all this crap too, which I don't want. Then let me go back here. Uh, do something like this. Okay. Let's do this. All right, so we're gonna get it done. But um, yeah, it's consistent of gang, uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint mainly because I was trying to optimize it for PC streaming because that's where I play a lot of my, well, most of my multiplat games are being played on PC. Um, I haven't really finished Days Gone either. That's been on my radar. So my PlayStation people don't think that I forgot about y'all. I still gotta finish Days Gone. Um, oh, it was okay. Uh, you know. Um, but I, I was, I was only like eight hours into the game, maybe 10, you know what I'm saying? It's all right. You know, but again, this is the channel for hard knock digital culture. We applaud, we, we applaud all hard knock digital culture type of, uh, content, which is hard, hardcore games. So I definitely need to finish that game on this channel. And I think I got everything done. I think I'm in a good place as far as tweeting everything out. Let's minimize that. Let's get over here. Uh, and again, hold on, where's my loot chat at? I won't forget about my loot chat, peoples. Where's my loot chat? Anybody leave something in the loot chat? I thought I saw something. No, okay, all right. And again, you can hit up the loot chat and support the channel free of charge to you. All right, let's get into it, y'all. We got six people watching. Again, tweet this out if you can. I'd appreciate it. It'll mean a lot to your boy. Let me do one more thing. Um, Twitter, and I think I can. I'm going to do one more. One more. All right. Get into it. Boom. Boom goes the dynamite. All right. And I can do this too. <laughs> While I'm in here. You know, I got a, I got a promo on uh, YouTube. For this actual stream. So it'd be fantastic if you guys could. All right, what's going on here? All right, there we go. Okay. Knew you could do it. All right, close that out. All right, let's get into it, y'all. Big up to everybody in the chat. I want to shout out everybody in the chat. Devin got the box. Thank you for the voicemail. I hate microtransactions, Activision. Um, let's also talk to, let's see, we got Heath Stevens. Um, I thank you stream jar for retweeting this out and my night bot. <laughs> Who else we got in here? We got fatal. Hey, what's up fatal? You know what I mean? All right. And again, do me a favor guys. Tweet this out. So everybody know that we're live. We got nine watching. Appreciate it. All right, let's get into it, man. First and foremost, game pass. Okay. Um, this was really the catalyst for the show today. Um, and again, I'm not I'm not sneak dissing anybody. I don't attack people for differences of opinion. I just sometimes I will I will rebut if you try to overwhelm the gaming community with your opinion, thinking that everybody 
should follow what you follow when you don't when you don't appreciate diversity of thought and you don't try to express diversity of thought and how you portray stuff, you know, and also um, when you try to, again, try to act like that you are the tell all be all for something. And I get it. In a world of entertainment, you know, people will talk in absolutes, but in 99% of the time, it's fine. It's okay. It, it's to be understood that that's someone's opinion. But sometimes we, we step out of that realm, we go overboard, and we try to pronounce things as a given for most people when it's not a given. You know what I mean? So it's only in those times that I try to interject and say, no, this isn't across the borders you're making it out to be. Um, but that said, when I see, when I say this, I don't um, say this as a sneak diss or anything like that. It's just to highlight a difference of an opinion. So I had the pleasure of waking up this morning to, um, I believe it was Iron Lord's podcast um, where they have, they usually do a little snoop and, and big ups to them. They usually do these little snippets of their podcast. And one of the things that they were talking about was Game Pass. And one of the things they were debating is why does Game Pass get so much rebuttal in regards to it only being a dollar or two dollars to sign up for the service, right? Uh, and they had an issue with people worrying about the economic stability of Game Pass. They called it pocket watching. And one of the scenarios that they used was when I go buy the Lambo from the car shop, I don't ask why is this $10,000 under price or whatever like that. Right. And I get that. I, I, I kind of get it, but then I don't think that that capsulizes the issue on why we do need to ask how financially stable this thing is going to be. Here's why. All right, well, let, let me first go over what I agree with. What I agree with is as a gamer, for me to solely care about if someone is making more money than another entity, that's a problem. And a lot of people out here asking questions about Game Pass. They're not asking it in the realm of is Microsoft making enough money? Because these same people are not asking those same questions about Disney. Nobody's asking those questions about Disney. Disney told you that with the Disney Plus service for the first, I could be way off here. So uh, apologies, I'm, I'm old. First five to 10 years, maybe, or, so, or maybe not that long. Maybe the first two years. For the first two years, they expect to lose a billion dollars off the Disney Plus service. Just getting people signed up. Hosey 22 was good, was good. Again. They are estimating Disney Plus. I mean, Disney with the Disney Plus service. They are estimating that they are going to lose within the first two to three years. I believe now, now my, my old recollection is coming back to me. A billion dollars. But yet. Nobody questions the veracity of them succeeding off that, that service. So again, because you don't have the same people out there talking about Disney Plus is going to fail, but yet Game Pass is going to fail and they're pretty much doing the exact same thing. And it's not, and they're not arguing about the content. They're arguing about the business model solely. I get it if you're going to talk about the content, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. But if you're talking about the business model, they're saying solely the business model is a failing business model, but it's the same business model that Disney Plus is going to exercise. And they told you they are going to lose a billion dollars in three years. 
And I don't see nobody walking to the ledge saying that Disney Plus is going to fail. Nobody wants that L. Nobody wants it. But under the same business model, we're saying that Game Pass is inherently going to fail. That, I think, is wrong. The Game Pass business model, actually, to me, the business model, again, I put business model in big quotations, capital letters, asterisks. The Game Pass business model actually is a more investor-friendly, lucrative business model. Because the way that it works is they do fill their, their stuff up with content that they make on their own. But most of it they plan to fill with third-party games that after they've reached their peak, people will pick them up. In Game Pass, they get they write them a check and say, "Okay, you you're past your peak period. You're not going to make any more money on this game all the court. So I'm going to write you a check for blah 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 blah, whatever, and let our let our game be let your game be in Game Pass. You can potentially, and then what they're doing is they're supplementing that with day and date stuff, which is their own content." That balances out the amount of money that you're paying off or opposed to Disney. They're making all this top notch, high quality stuff that they're shelling money out of the pocket for themselves at doing the peak. So there's a big difference if I, I can sustain people by just cutting a few $9 million checks opposed to me making nine games that I have to produce and market for $150 million a pop. Do you understand what I'm saying? Again, MM2K will repeat. For those of you that are not aware of how this business model works, the game passes, it, it, it finds itself in. These games are already past peak. They've already made their money. Microsoft simply sits down and says, okay, we're going to cut you a check. You're not going to make any more money now. But we would like to still give you an opportunity to see some revenue from us. We're going to write you a check for 5, 10, 50. I, 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 was, I think it's maximum 20 million. But the average is probably around nine when we're talking about triple, AAA games. And why do I say that? Because we know for a fact that Epic Games for day and date exclusivity gave control $9 million. And the industry was saying that was top dollar. So if Epic Games is giving what's considered top dollar for day and date access to their platform and top dollar is considered $9 million, then it's fair to say that Microsoft, the checks that they're writing for games after peak is around that level, okay? So with that said, it's a lot less money to give you to start writing checks after peak where I'm paying for nine AAA games after peak. I write out nine checks for nine million opposed to me producing nine triple a games myself to make and market at 150 million a pop and disney plus's model was more of a we got to fund this ourselves to make this come to fruition so do you see where it's a more lucrative business model whether you like it as a consumer or not it just is now with that being said that is the part where I do agree with. People are, if you are worrying if Microsoft is making more money than Sony, therefore it's not a good deal, that's absurd. I think last fiscal year, Sony made 19 million in gaming. Microsoft made 16, uh, no, not million, billion. Sony made 19 billion, I could be off. 
Sony made, I mean, Microsoft made 16 billion. Even if Sony made 22 billion, Microsoft still made 16 billion. They're fine financially as far as you worrying about are they making more money than Sony? They don't have to make more money than Sony to be stable. Okay? So I just want to capsulize that. And I just want to close that part off with, for those of you that think it's a failure for Microsoft to do this model be simply because they're not making as much money as Sony, even though they're giving you the consumer a better deal and they're still making a bunch of money. It's a farce. That's fanboy fodder. And I get where Iron Lord's podcast was coming from on that front. Okay. However, this is where we get into the looks to the cran. This is where I disagree. And I don't feel that the pocket watching term is adequate. If I let's just say if I'm all in on game. Y'all know your boy how your boy MM2K feels about Game Pass. Y'all should know. I think the business model is fantastic. And I think it's it's a lucrative business model. I think Sony should do it. I think Sony may be scared, but when you do the analytics on it and you look at ways to put maybe more guardrails on it, because let's be honest, their products are a lot more precious to the gaming community than Microsoft's are. It's just a fact. The gaming community as a whole This generation feels that Sony's product is more precious than Microsoft's, period. Um, So if they feel that because of how quote unquote precious that product is, that they need to put bigger guardrails on it, there's ways for them to do that. There are absolute ways for them to do that to where Microsoft can be a little bit more risky about it because they're not in such high demand. You know what I mean? So the less incentive people have to try to crack it and, and figure out some way to manipulate the system. So I get that from Sony, but I think with bigger and better guardrails, Sony can definitely benefit from this model. And I spoke on this before because you got to think about it. All right, God of War, for instance, 10 million people bought, 10 million plus people bought God of War. There are 100 million consoles out there. That means 90 million people didn't buy God of War. Now, nothing to say that 10 million people still will not grant you success. But if you put those God of Wars and those games in their day and date, and therefore you make your service more lucrative to let's let's say 60 million people, (coughs) 70 million people, and they're all paying 10 or 9.99 a month, you're going to make more money. You're going to make more money than you would for selling your game at $60 to 10 million people. If you keep 60, 70 million people sustained on your service because they know your shit is dropping day or date, you're going to make more money. Do the math. Just do, just do the simple math. Sony usually drops two triple a bangers a year. So just calculate it. The two triple a bangers are $120, right? Retail multiply it times 10 million. Think on the same time frame. If you got people, if you got 50, 60, 70 million people paying $60 a year or $120 a year because they're doing it month to month, just do the math. They make more money. That's it. Um, they, ha- they would have to go out their stuff more. But 
With that said, and this is where, again, I don't believe that the watching pockets terminology is accurate. Okay, let's say, now, and, and I want to use Sony as an example because I want this to hit home for everybody. Because again, for the gaming public at mass, at mass, Sony's products are more quote unquote precious. So I am somebody, I'm my man Heath Stevens in the chat, big ups to the homie Heath Stevens. I don't believe in this Game Pass bullshit, right? I don't believe in this shit. I don't subscribe to it. I'm not, you would have to cut my arms off for me to even consider it. Right? I don't believe in this. But let's just say somebody comes to Heath and they say, Heath, just try it out. Because Sony's going day and day. Yoshida calls up Heath. He I said, Heath, I heard an MM2K podcast because he's my favorite podcaster, right? <laughs> and I see you in the chat, Heath. And I'm letting you know that today we're going to, in PlayStation Now, all PlayStation games are going to be day and date like Game Pass. I want you to try it out, my friend. And he says, well, damn. Okay, Yoshida. If it's all like that, let me give it a shot. And he signs up for it. So no longer is he buying his Uncharted or his God of Wars a la carte. He's getting them through the service. He's downloading them. You know, it's all the same shit that you could do with play PS Now via his, his PlayStation. And he's paying $10 a month for it or just $60 a year, right? And he's like, man, this is the shit. And he's actually enjoying this. But let's just say a year into it, Yoshida just calls my man Heath up again and says, you know what? Heath, I see your, I see your numbers, bro. I see you on Game Pass. I mean, I see you on PlayStation now all the time. You don't went and you went and downloaded nine games, man. All at once. This is the most we've seen you active on the system. This is a great deal for you. And he's like, yeah, yo, Gina, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Thank you, my brother. Well, Heath, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> we were hoping that within 12 months, we would at least get 30 million people engaged. And we only got 5 million people engaged. We're just not reaching the saturation, Heath. I'm sorry, man, but guess what? We're shutting down PlayStation now. But if you want to buy these eight or nine games, I'll give you $2 off each game. <laughs> Heath is like, what? Hold up, what the hell? Yo, Shada, yo, she, I'm sorry, Heath. Have a wonderful day. Click. Now, if we're under the whole mind, the whole prism of quote unquote pocket watching, it because my homie Heath don't want to be pocket watching, so he's not worrying about the success of the service and how many people are coming on, and if they're starting to gain some type of revenue or if the overhead just keeps increasing, 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 because he's not pocket watching, quote unquote. Heath is not informed to understand the stability of this, of this service. And because he doesn't understand the stability of said service, guess what happens? He gets lost in the sauce. And now, eight or nine games that my homie Heath was actively playing are now gone. They're gone. And he has to go reinvest and buy those. He's already, he's already invested in these games emotionally. So now he got to go buy these games. Is that, a, is that a good deal for Heath? Hell no, it's not. So, again, I always try to tell y'all. On the left, you got one side of the story. On the right, you got another side of the story. Somewhere in the middle is the truth. 
So even though I feel personally that the business model of Game Pass is fantastic, I'm not a fan of the content that's in there so much, even though it grants me access to their dog shit games. No, no, let me stop. stop. It grants me access to their game for a dollar until my service lapses. But I, I'm not a big fan of the service because it's not drawing in the casuals from numbers that I can see. So if I'm in a situation like Heath where instead of buying my games, I'm just getting them via Game Pass and let's just say when Halo Infinite drops and then after Game Pass drop in and let's just say if Game Pass really don't see sustained sustain success for Game Pass, if Gears 5 doesn't do that for Game Pass, then Halo Infinite drops and Halo Infinite fails. But yet I got people saying, well, Microsoft made 16 billion. Stop pocket watching. And then I go to boot up my game and come to find out that in 30 days or 60 days, they're shutting down day and date and game, or they're just shutting down Game Pass altogether. I'm lost in the sauce. Do you see what I'm saying? So, I don't think worrying so much about who's number one opposed to who's number two is the tell all be all. But we do need to pocket watch a little bit. Do you see what I'm saying? You do need to pocket watch because as a consumer, I'm not granted full access to that game. See, this is different. That's why I said, I don't think that was the best description using the car scenario where I go pick up the Lambo. Cause when I go pick up the Lambo, whether it's 10, 20, $30,000 left, once I drop the money on the wood, it's mine. Playing games solely in a subscription service, it's never yours. So you have to trust the stability of the service and you have to trust the entity that's providing that service. So under those pretenses, yes, you do have to pocket watch. You do. There's no other way around it. Now I want to get to the chat. And again, don't forget, y'all, we're doing live. Um, woo, hold on. We're doing live calls. So uh, let me let me pull this up. We're doing live phone calls. I'm not taking them live just yet. We will soon. But you can leave a voicemail. Or as soon as I go live, I will let y'all know. And if, if y'all are waiting to rush in live, hey, I appreciate it. But you can support the channel or leave something in the live chat there. But do y'all y'all feel what I'm saying? What do y'all think about what I'm saying here? No Russian 82 says Kansas will only purchase a few games that they want per year. He Stevens, you will pay more less than what PlayStation Now is. Um PlayStation Now was actually a combo of Game Pass and X Cloud, you idiot junk box fanboys. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not on Discord, Heath. I'm not on Discord. But call in, bro. When I go live, call in or leave a voice message. Um, Platinum says Game Pass has really good content. Uh <sighs> How do I address this, man? How do I address this? Um, when we say really, when we say things like good and bad, we know that that's all subjective. There is no definitive good and bad that applies to everyone. Now, there are some people I mean, there are some things that are common, that are heavily common, like dog shit don't taste good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not a great delicatessen. You know what I mean? 
sawing someone's head off and cutting up in pieces it grosses people out. Those are just, those are common things. Crackdown three is dog shit. <laughs> those are common things, right? Now, here's what I ha would have to ask for my homeboy uh, seven oh six gamer. What is more common? Something that ninety five percent of gamers feel. Or 5% of gamers feel. Now, under recent information that we've had, it looks like that Game Pass may have reached its peak of 3 million subscribers around the time that Gears 5 released. It looks like it's around 3 million people played the game. I'm not played the game, but has Game Pass. Through, through some roundabout way, I think Microsoft inadvertently, and I can't remember, I think I bookmarked it. I hope I did. Bookmarked the tweet where Aaron Greensburg and Microsoft inadvertently let you know how many people were in Game Pass, at least at the beginning of October. And I find it hard to fathom that if there's 3 million people in Game Pass at the beginning of October, that that number significantly grew. I mean, not the beginning of October, the beginning of uh, September. If the, there were 3 million people at the beginning of September due to the release of Gears 5, I find it hard to fathom that that grew significantly because Gears 5 isn't even in the top 20 play games um, for Xbox. Um and also, with Gears 5's declining in popularity, you don't see any other Game Pass game go up in popularity. So, we're around 3 million people, I want to believe, with Game Pass. With that said, um, let's do the math. It is, it is fathomed that there are around 250 million um, uh, gamers out there, console gamers, or potential console gaming uh, uh, people out there, uh, at this uh, at this time, so I want to do this. I'm gonna do the math real quick. Three divided by two fifty. Okay, holy shit! All right, so we got three million people, around three million people that have Game Pass. Let's say that we got three million people that got Game Pass. Out of the two hundred and fifty million potential console people out there. Um, that's less than 1%. So that's why I said, oh, no, no, no. It's slightly over 1%. It's 1.2%. So what's, what is, what is more common? What's relevant to 1.2% or what's relevant to 98.8%? You see what I'm saying? So, we may feel, and I'm with you, 706, I'm with you. Game Pass has good content in it. I think Game Pass is a good, good deal. But it's not a value. That's why I want to say it's not a value. It's not a value because when something is a value or valuable, you'll do what you got to do to access it. If something is valuable, you'd want it in your possession, correct? 98.2% of gamers don't want it in their possession. And Microsoft themselves consider Game Pass a platform because it's on multiple hardware. And it's coming to cell phones, toasters, and tennis shoes, right? Tennis shoes with LCD screens on them. So even though me and you may feel, and I always say we're within the one to five percent that it has good content, that's not what's going to sustain the service. What's going to sustain the service is if they get around 30, 40, 50 million people, right? If they start off there, that's how many people they need to start off with in order to make the system look valuable or to be considered to have good content. Not enough people feel the same way that you and I feel, 706 Gamer, even after the media blitz of Game Pass and Gears 5 is everywhere. Like I always say, I'm a state of technology, I'm on cakes, cookies, and pies. It's everywhere. Three million people? Well, I don't know. I don't know.
So with that said, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. All right. So, so again, so we come down the middle. We don't bloviate, go over the lines, go into the weeds, whatever famous MM2K pun you want to use. Let's look at this decisively. Because I'm a jealous man, I like to shoot down puns <laughs> before they get popular, right? Like I couldn't stand that goddamn fear monger. That was the, that was the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> I saw like something that uh, what's his name uh, from the Fly? Oh man, and that he was on Thor Ragnarok. Um, God damn, I always forget his name. I can never remember his name, but I, I got the internet in front of me. Uh, Thor, oh, come on, come on, computer, Thor, Ring, Narok, cast. Because we, we actually had a day form here, which was crazy. Ain't that, so hold on. Oh, Jeff Goldblum. I don't know why I can never remember this guy's name. But that goddamn fear mongering. Fear mongering. <laughs> this sounds like some dumb shit that come out Jeff Goldblum's mouth. I hate it. I hate that. It's so stupid. That as a consumer, I can't be critical. If you're doing dog shit, I'm going to announce that you're doing dog shit. I'm invested in the ecosystem. There ain't no fucking fear mongering. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. And Tim Dog, big ups to Tim Dog. Tim Dog knew I couldn't stand that shit. So in the DMs, he say, hey, MM2K, you're fear mongering. <laughs> you knew I could. Ah! Arr! So this whole pocket watching thing, I got to shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it, shut it. I got to shut it down. We got a pocket watch. I like the scenario that was getting big. And big ups to Iron Lord Park. I'm not dissing them. But I, I just, you know, we, we got to look at things from 5,000 feet. There goes another MM2K pun. I'm surprised someone ain't trying to shoot my, shut my shit down. But we, we, we got to look at this thing in entirety, right? When, when I go to the store and I buy the Lambo, I'm leaving with the Lambo. The Lambo's mine, <laughs> you know? None of these games are yours. You're just granted access to the subscription service. And before anybody says, well... You know, with the advent of DRM, these games are not... No, at least I have access to it. At least I can start up the game. You know, with DRM, I can even start up the game. Now, it may not let me play it, but it's mine. It, it, it's property. And it has a different legal pretense than a subscription service. A subscription service is like leasing a car. It's never truly yours. Opposed to buying it and maybe getting a loan for it. Yes. The, the, the car isn't yours until you get the title and you pay off the loan. But at least you have an opportunity for it to be yours. With, this, with the subscription service solely, no. It's never yours. And it's never going to be yours. You have to go outside of the realms of the subscription service in order to make it yours. So if I'm Heath Stevens, and, and let's just say Game Pass, I mean, uh, Play, PlayStation Now was doing day and date in 2018. Let's just say if I was Heath Stevens and in December of 2018, I said, oh, shit, this is great. Let me sign up for uh let me sign up for PlayStation now. And in February of 2019, Yoshida gives that infamous call that I just laid out and said, Heath, I'm sorry. We're shutting it down. I've already invested all this money into these two games. And let's, and let's just say he went and bought a year. Like, come on, man. We got to watch this. When it comes to subscription service, you got to watch it because people will get fully invested in these games. And this is what Microsoft and these other people want that have these subscription service. They want you to keep paying month to month to month. So they want you invested in these games. And if they shut the game down or shut the service down, then what are you going to do? But go buy the game. But you don't already drop $120 just to have it.
So, with that said, yeah, you got a pocket watch. Big up to homie. Devin got the box. He said, bro, what about you play plus? Yeah. Same with you play plus. All of them. All of them. All these subscription services. We need to know how well they're doing. I'm not just I'm not just picking on Xbox. I'm just attacking the notion that we shouldn't worry about how successful the service is monetarily. Because at the end of the, the day, they're doing they're not doing this to do us a favor. It's a quid, well, I, quid pro quo ain't the best way to describe it, but the fuck it, I'll use it anyway. It's a quid pro quo. I'll give you something lucrative. You give me something lucrative, right? You need to know how successful all these services are doing. And Platinum says Netflix and Hulu included. Absolutely, yes. You need to keep your eyes on Hulu. But here's the thing. With. Oh, shit. What the hell was that? I'm by a hospital and this helicopter was fairly close to my house <laughs> he's about to hear me belly flop on the floor holy shit anyway um with that said uh with, when it comes to tv it's 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 usually a one and done right you watch something on tv for for most people it's one or done you normally don't come back to where with games now, they're more focused on, especially with them being service-based, they're more focused on you coming to those games over and over and over again every day of your life. You get, you hunker down, you invest in a title, and you keep coming to it every day, every day. So yeah, even though I will say that yeah, you still want to be invested in knowing how much you're paying for service, usually with, with a TV show, or it's one or done. That being said, you want to know how well all of them are doing. And Netflix is showing you that. They're showing you that. They're showing you the numbers. Microsoft ain't showing you shit. They're not showing you shit. And as a consumer, I want to know. As someone that's making a serious decision next generation, if whether I'm going to subscribe into Game Pass and go all in on Microsoft or even invest an opinion to them, I want to know how well they're doing. So yes, I am pocket watching. So, with that said, hey, let's do this. Um... I will take, I'm taking live phone calls now. I will, I'm taking live phone calls. And again, if you want to call in, I'm going to leave this. Call in to 724-739-3612. Let everybody know we are live. Let me see here. Let me share this out on Twitter again. Taking live calls now. Okay. Let me see. Taking... Let me to make sure that I can hear the live calls. Let me this. There we go. Taking. Oh, shit. The hell? What the hell? Okay, let me just. Perhaps taking live calls now. Boom, 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 boom. At. Four. Nine thirty six twelve in the states. Yeah, send it out. All right, so all right. First, let me go over the voicemails that I have. I'm first going to play. This is from the homie Devin. Got the box. Let's play this very good voicemail and we'll respond to it. But again, I'm taking live calls now. Let's get into it. I ain't playing. 
What? What's going on? Why ain't it playing? Hold on. Let me pause this. What? Uh -uh. Okay, let's stop. What the hell happened? Oh, we got a call right now. Yo, 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 yo. This is your boy, MM2K. You are live. Give me one second so I can unmute you. And I, after I unmute you for the podcast, I need you to give like a gamer tag and all that good stuff. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, good brother. Hold on. Let me fix something. Because something, something went awry. Something went awry. I don't know why. Something went awry. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm going to fix this. What I was trying to do was. Yeah, it's playing. It was, it's, it was just playing through the goddamn going. I swear. All right, we're going to play it through the, uh, I'm just gonna play it through my speakers. All right, let's do it like that. Okay, and it's louder that way anyway. All right. I was trying to set it up to where in case I had somebody else in the chat they could hear it too, but we ain't gonna do all that fancy do that stuff. All right. So I'm gonna play. I'm sorry, whoever that was, call back. We got everything working now. My deepest apologies. This is the MM2K Janky Show. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so let's go to Devin's. We got, we got Devin, the homie Devin. We got his voicemail. Let's get into it. Yeah, man, this is Devin. I just wanted to talk about Rare for a second. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people say that they want Rare to start creating more new IPs and not give Conker and Banjo-Kazooie reboots of their own for Next Generation. And and I'm just thinking to myself, well, Rare did create new IPs. They created CFDs, and they're creating Battletoads, and everybody shits on those. So I'm asking, what the hell do people want? All right, and that was homie Devin got the box. He said he's tired of y'all motherfuckers shitting on Rare when they're dropping new IPs. Um, and big, uh, hey Devin, drop drop a link to your channel too, man. Another Xbox guy, part of the PNTS network. You know what I'm saying? I'm working with him and some other good people, some other non Xbox guys. We 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 gotta. I, I'm not ready to. I don't think we're ready to make the announcements because it's going to be a shock, but I got a, I got a PlayStation guy that's going to help out with PNTS network too. So I got to get everybody together, man. We, we, we doing some, we doing some big things, man. Y'all think y'all going to, y'all going to like, y'all going to like the stuff coming from this individual. Um, but that being said, Devin got the box, got a great channel. Um, could y'all hear that loud and clear? If you could hear, hear that loud and clear, let me know. In addition to that, uh, also, um, uh, let me see here. You call in again. I deeply apologize. Something happened where my uh, uh, Skype wasn't working. <gasps> Excuse me. Charted number one, bro. So okay. All right. So let me let me let me say this to to Devin's question. Um, I think taking the criticism literally may not be looking at the whole picture. And I get it. There's, there, You are right that there are some PlayStation people out there that just want to shit on Xbox. It's just their MO. But as someone that um, came into this generation bleeding green profusely, right? <laughs> um, I can't say that admittingly uh, what Rear has been focused on has not filled in the gaps 
for Microsoft. Um, sea of Thieves and then Battletoads. Look, 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 here's at the end of the day, a consumer company relationship is about satisfaction. We already know what the companies are satisfied with, right? The motherfuckers are satisfied with money, correct? They want money. Money. That's all they want. They want money. As long as they're getting money, they're satisfied. Uh -oh. People calling me everywhere. That's what they're satisfied with. We as consumers are satisfied with different things depending upon the platform. So, if for Xbox, if your people are proclaiming where are the AAA games that get us excited? Your sci-fi shooters that you really didn't focus on, right? Um, or where are the games that are going to, where are the AAA games that are going to make this new Xbox One X thing that I'm getting, where I feel like I'm getting the most out of my $500? But yet you're dropping Sea of Thieves or Rare is uh, helping to come to fruition this Bullshit looking Battletoads game. I'm sorry. But on the flip side, they got Nintendo people jumping out of shoes and socks by Ant and Banjo Kazooie. The perception ain't right. It seems like you're more in tune with everybody else than you are with your own game. It's like you want to satisfy. I, think of it like this. Think of it like this. And everybody that's married has had this problem. I've had this problem at first and I had to let my wife know. And again, this is not going to be politically correct, but I'm all about letting my gamers understand why things are the way that they are. So one of the biggest upheavals that a lot of married people have is outside influences. Like, if in your life, you are someone that was dependent upon social interaction with other people to help you decide what you're going to do in life, then when you get into a relationship, sometimes those outside influences can still have an adverse effect on you trying to grow with that person that you're in a relationship with. All right. So me and my wife is different. My wife, even though she's psycho and she's nuts and she'll throw the hands at the drop of a dime, she loves interacting and talking with people. I love interacting and talking to people that are into the things that I'm into. And when I say that, I don't mean you got to specifically be an Xbox gamer. No, I love talking to gamers because you're into gaming. You know what I'm saying? I love talking to people that are into technology. If you're into something that I'm into and therefore you have something that I feel like I can grow from because I'm not one of those people with an ego where I feel like that I know everything. If, if our conversation fits into one of those bags, then I definitively will engage you. If it doesn't, then I don't. <laughs> My wife will talk to any and everybody. So when I say that, the reason why I brought that up is because through life, I've always kept a very small circle. You know what I'm saying? It's not because I'm judging people or I think I'm bad. I don't. I understand my lane and I know your lane. Right? And I ain't trying to mess up your shit. And I definitely don't want you messing up mine. Okay. So when me and my wife got together, she was prone to be going to her friends and, and, and her family and getting information and advice on this shit. I don't do, I, I don't do that. I have, I've had mentors, I have people that I confide in, but at the end of the day, I take all of the information provided to me by all of the sources that are close to me. I decompartmentalize it. And I, at the end of the day, make my own motherfucking decision. Okay. So in the earlier years of our marriage, my wife kept, bringing shit that was on other people's doorsteps into our house. 
And me, I'm not an explosive person where my wife can be. That's the, the I'm, I'm very calculated. I just gingerly kept telling her that ain't got nothing to do with us. So I don't care about it. I, I truly don't care. I'm not trying to be mean. It's not, I'm, we can talk about a thousand things. I just don't want to talk about that. It has nothing to do with us. And she kept doing and doing until one day I had to stop being nice about it. And I had to say, you are so focused on them motherfuckers out there. I tell you what, you tell them to pay the water bill. You tell them to pay the light bill. You tell them to fund you going to the mall and spend up on. When they do that, then I'll listen to what they have to say. But until that day comes, do not spend another second of your life bringing their shit to my doorstep or I will go bananas. And I know in today's day and age, the, the, the overbearingness of masculinity. No, it ain't about that. It was a, it's just a respect thing. If I am the one along with you taking care of the household, then, and they're not, who cares what they, what, what how, who cares how you satisfy them over me? I would never put anybody over you. You don't put anybody over me. Now we're long past that being something that needed to be addressed, but it had to be addressed. Now, why did I peer so deep into the MM2K world to give y'all that? Was it because to give y'all a life lesson? No. But it was to say this. As an Xbox gamer, it's nice that Phil Spencer and company want to give people a banjo and kazooie to, you know, say that games aren't about headshots and kills. But at the end of the day, we are the ones keeping your lights on, Microsoft. We are the ones paying your bills. So you're damn right. If you're at a dice conference and you're, or if you're saying these things about headshots and kills at an E3, or if you're getting Nintendo people ex more excited about your IPs than you are your own group, I'm going to feel slighted and I'm going to say so. So, again, to what Devin had to say, excellent voicemail. Thank you, my friend, for, for leaving that voicemail. I parse it into two parts. Yes, the people in the console war, that just they're going to hate on anything Xbox does. But as a valid consumer, I don't think all of the hate towards Rear is unprecedented. I don't think it's unwarranted. I think it's necessary. I'm paying your bills. I'm putting the food in your mouth. You consider me above all. Then what's ever left, you can feed them with it outside. Nobody, no other gaming company does this. And because they don't do it, their consumer base is engaged. And because their consumer base is engaged, they're kicking Microsoft's ass. Simple as that. Simple as that. I can't describe it any other way. But so therefore, so I'm I'm 50-50 about the hate that we're maybe getting. But with that said, excellent voicemail. Let's go on to the next one. And again, call in. Is somebody trying to call in? You can't get through. Did I saw this 313 number? Is somebody trying to call in and you can't get through? If you are, leave something in the chat and I'll call you back. All right, let's go to this next. Oh, oh, we got it. Here we go. We got another one. All right. You are on the NRO podcast with MM2K. Do us a favor. Let us know who you are on your favorite social media platform and let us know what your message is for the day. Okay. Hey, Moss. This is Heath. Hey, Heath. What's going on, buddy? Oh, not too much. Same old. 
So, but what, what, before, I, you go, uh, before you go, Heath, let, let us know where they can find you at, at least on Twitter. Uh, it's at Heath Stevens 69 on Twitter. Cool. Cool. Okay. I'm pretty easy to find. Cool. All right. I'm not sorry to interrupt. You. Go ahead. Go ahead, good brother. Go ahead. Give us, give us your, give us your gospel today. I'm on just about everything, you know, Twitter, YouTube, just about everywhere. I'm pretty easy to find if you look for me. Cool. Um, but yeah, I didn't understand earlier whenever you were trying to say the numbers. If you figure it out, okay, mm-hmm. stay just as a base, just as the base. If you have five million, mm-hmm. you know. You're only going to get like three hundred million dollars from mm-hmm. subscriptions mm-hmm. for five million subs, okay? Mm-hmm. But if you sell two games at sixty dollars a piece, that's mm-hmm. one point two billion. Mm-hmm. So where is your math adding up that you're going to make more money off streaming? Yes, if you have that many subscribers, mm-hmm. because think about it: even if you double it and you go to ten million, you're only going to have half of what you would have if you sold those two games at $60 a piece. And this is what I don't understand about these Xbox fanboys. They always say, oh, PlayStation needs Game Pass. PS Now is two services in one pretty much because we all know that when xCloud comes out, more than likely Microsoft's going to charge us for it, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to pay for two services that I have in one because PS now has over 300 PS4 games to download and then over 800 games to stream. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand the whole, every time all I see is, Oh, they need day and date. They don't need day and date. I would like them to shorten the time that they do put their exclusives on there for PS now. Yes. You know, I'm sure we all would. That would make a lot of other people happier. But come on now. Microsoft isn't doing what they need to, and the Xbox fanboys need to stand up and yell, or you're going to lose your damn box. That's what's going to happen next gen, because they're going to go all services, all third party. They're going to be a dev and a publisher, and then you guys are going to be asked to fuck out, and then we're going to get put in a situation like we did last gen with PS3. I want Xbox to do good because they put pressure on PlayStation to do better. But good point. Let me let me let, let me ask you this and let's parse it up in, in, in two ways. So the the first is definitely PlayStation now is represents Game Pass and what's gonna be offered in XCloud, and that's absolutely right. So to that I would say Microsoft, if they're smart, they're gonna do a they're gonna combine the service to where they make Game Pass Ultimate include X Cloud. That would be smart for them. Um, secondly, to to address the second part, no, and I apologize if I said five million. I thought I said fifty million because the end all be all for these subscription services is five ten million is is garbage. That's that's not a high enough number. These guys got it. I would say within the first year or two, they got to hit a milestone of thirty million. And then ultimately the sweet spot is anywhere between, I want to say 50 to 80 million. If you're hitting 50 to 80 million with these subscription services, then you're, you're in the black. Um, that's where, that's where it would be lucrative for them. So if you got a, subscri- oh, yeah. if you got a subscription service where it's 50 to 80 million, you're going to make more money than buying those two games all the cart. You right. know, so, you know what, you know what, first you got to sell the consoles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, right yeah, and people, and and people got to find your spooky, service lucrative. Microsoft, here's, here's the spooky thing. Microsoft is not reporting numbers, so we have no clue what the hell is going on with them. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, and Derek, I'm not an Xbox hater. I want Xbox to do good. Like I said, that puts pressure on PlayStation to stay honest. You are a hater. I don't you want, know you hate Xbox. I don't want a repeat. <laughs> I do not want a repeat of last gen. Um, and no, I'm not a Sony sheep. I also have a PC. <laughs> I hey, also have a PC. Hey, look, uh, you know what? We did. We have an. Oh, we got another incoming call. Uh, give, give give me a second. Give me a sec. I'm, a, I'm hold on. I'm gonna place answer this call. We'll place your. Hold on one second. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no. 
I'm glad to pop in. Hey, 313, whoever you are, I'm going to, you want me to call you? I will call you if you want me to, because you've been trying to get in here, brother. It's just your timing wasn't uh, the greatest this time. Let me say this, Heath, before we close out. Um, no, yeah, we definitely want, we don't want, I don't want to see Xbox go away. I don't want to see PlayStation go away. Anybody that asks for that is absurd. Um, what I will say to that, though, is that you, I do agree with you, Heath, that PlayStation doesn't need to do this. They can still, I mean, $22 billion is good, but, well, they don't need to do this to make a lot of money. They, if these, if this subscription service flies and it succeeds, they will have to transition. And I think what they're doing is smart. They're in a place to where they can flip day or date on and they can do well. So with that being said, Maybe. Yep. Hey, the, the, the other, the, the one other thing I do want to say is, like he said, Phil Spencer said the box doesn't matter. That's mm. fucking scary. Yeah. They need to yeah. spin, micro, yeah. Microsoft needs to spin Xbox off and let them stand on their own so that they're not, you know what I mean? They could do their own thing. Well, I say this, let's do, what, let's do this, Heath. Let's get, I want to see, we, we have no choice but to give them to Halo Infinite releases. If by Halo Infinite's release, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. We got until E3. We got XO coming, yeah. XO, XO 19 coming, and they're flying people out to this motherfucker, right? And then we got we, we yeah, got E3, E3 coming. If by those two shows, Heath, they don't get their shit together, I've I've said it before. It's it's death it's death calm five. It's death calm five. Yeah, yeah. I I say that too because think think about what Phil said last year. Oh, we held games back and blah blah blah. Oh, wait till next year. Well, this is, he said that the past five years. This is the last year he gets to say, wait till next year. I got you. you. Know? I'm with you. Hey, he, thank you so much for calling in, brother. We, I, I got some, We, you know what? I'm going to hold off on that because that's going to be some good stuff. But little, little, little bit of Heath Stevens there, y'all. Good guy. Appreciate it. Been a number, a day one supporter of, of, of the platform, man. I appreciate it. He, thank you for your call, brother. Yep. No problem, man. All right. And that was good, man. That was good. I got a couple of voicemails from 313. Hey, 313, call back in now that I got Heath off, and I'm going to play one of your voicemails in the interim. So this is from, uh, I'm going to just call him 313 right now. Next voicemail. Oh, he's calling in now. All right. 313, mystery person. Hey, do me a favor. Let us know who you are and where we can catch you on your favorite social media platform, and you can spit your gospel. What's going on? You know who I am, man. Oh, shit! No! I was trying to call in, man. He seems when shut up. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Derek Griggity. Hey, Call Derek. my boy Mars live. <laughs> hey, man. Listen, listen. I was originally calling about Devin's voicemail. Uh-huh. Um, you know, Devin the homie, but I <clears throat> I disagree with him wholeheartedly. Okay. I think it's time to... Uh, move on from Conquer and shit and all those old Rare games. Gotcha. Uh, if there's any Rare IP that I could see them bring it back, that I'd be okay with Baby Perfect Dark. Okay. But we need to move on from, you know, the kitty shit. Xbox has enough of that kitty shit. Yeah. But let me go to Heath for a second. Listen, oh, we know Heath hate Xbox, right? <laughs> go, don't do, don't see, say Heath that. is a little different from me. <laughs> like, Moss, we're Xbox guys, but we enjoy uh, the platforms uh -huh. he hate xbox so everything you say is obviously biased and it's against <laughs> xbox now let hey. me say this uh-huh huh okay good uh -huh. now let now let me say this right quick i hear people say well if they make this game that game this game first of all every game is not going to sell like spider-man first off right mm -hmm. every game is not going to sell 10 million plus 15 million plus second those games come out what? Once, like, say, like, next year, Last of Us 2 comes out, 2020. When is the next Last of Us coming out? Or the next Uncharted, 2023, 2024? Okay. Yeah. These games come out, they sell great. But monthly income is what they're looking for. Like you said, Mars, they don't need to do day and day, but mm. they might do day and day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, they, that's what people need to really, and plus, they don't get sixty dollars for every game sold. People need true. to stop thinking that is true. Xbox and PlayStation Sony get sixty dollars for every game sold. 
you not see a chart that said they get thirty percent of every game sold for Well, it, it, it depends. If it's if it's a self made game, they they still there's like. Oh man, there's a uh, uh, even if they are even if they publish the game themselves, that whole sixty dollars mm-hmm. isn't theirs. Right. You know, a larger yeah, portion. The whole yeah, the whole sixty isn't theirs. Even if they publish and make the game, a larger portion of the game. And that's a very good point. A larger portion of the game gets taken out and goes somewhere else, opposed to the streaming service. That's how they do the workaround with the streaming service. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. See, that's my point. And also. A monthly income, consistent monthly income, will eventually. Now, this is a this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. You know that's why these companies give out free trials because they want you in the ecosystem. They want you paying monthly. And I just need people to realize that I don't know if Sony's going to do it. I think they are, but who really knows, right? Their games going in PS now day and day. But I'm just saying, don't be surprised if they do it because people just think they're not going to do this every game every game doesn't sell 25 million copies like spider-man or or, or the last of us is going to sell every game don't do that like little game of concrete candy i guarantee i know it's a smaller indie game but i guarantee many more people will be playing it if it was in ps now just my opinion bro but great show man i'm in here in the main streets of detroit yeah, man. With these crackheads and shit. <laughs> so, uh, a <laughs> hey, great video, by the way. Uh, uh, Good show, bro. I'm I'm going to continue to listen, bro. Thanks. Hey, yo, great great video. And can you do me a favor? Um, because I'm old yeah. and it's hard for me to multitask. Please drop a link to your video in, in the chat too, man. Oh, you talking about my like GameStop video? You talking about that? Yeah, you get. Yeah, yeah, your last video, man. Yeah, I okay. saw I saw I Z I saw I Z there, trying to spam you. Um. I'm trying to take your video and ask to upload it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, man. All right, bro. All right, Thanks man. a lot, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. That was the homie Dirk Griggity. You know what I'm saying? Him, and this is all love. Dirk Griggity and Heath. Uh, they go, they, hey, look, he, he, Heath be giving, calling us the shit box lovers and stuff during uh, scram punks. And, and so this is all love, man. This is, you know, friendly banter. All right. We can do this and not be considered toxic, right? You know, so great calls, great voicemails, man. Um, let me see. We're an hour and a half, and I didn't want this to go too long. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to re. No, no, let's 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 do this. Let's do this. Great subject matter. Um, tweet this out, everybody. Let everybody know we taking voice calls, man. With that being said, here's my last subject matter. No, you know what? No, no, I'm lying. I'm gonna say that. So it's a little bit of false advertising. I just I wanted to test out the the call system. I think we got it together. Uh, and uh, I think it was a good show, man. It's definitely a good show. So I want to let everybody know that the NRO, po- NRO podcast is exclusive to Twitch. All right. Now I do archive it to YouTube. So in a couple of weeks, you will see this episode on YouTube. Um, but we, 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 we're, we're affiliated with Twitch. This is an exclusive live show for Twitch. We're going to be doing more exclusive live content, allowing people to call in to voice your opinions and do all the other stuff, man. Fantastic. Appreciate it from all of you guys. You know, um, y'all make this shit happen, man. I'm, I'm, I'm humble by y'all support. You know, all I ask is to help make the show better because, uh, like for instance, I ain't e-begging. I'm just but for instance, they, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, um, we're going to be doing more game streams and stuff like that. So even shit like the free loot chat, you know, when y'all hit up, when y'all put questions into the free loot chat, um, that helps out tremendously. And then it don't, it don't cost you a dime. You know what I'm saying? So, um, even if y'all have something in the, in the chat and y'all want MM2K to read it because I got 80 screens going, I'm going to send y'all a picture of my screen. Y'all don't believe me. I got 80 things going at once to make this all happen. It may not seem like that on the, on the back, on the front end, but I do. And sometimes I miss a lot of you guys' good comments. So even if you drop a comment in the chat and you're like, oh, that was a real good one, drop it in the free messaging app. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I can read it live on air, you know, and it helps out the channel tremendously. It don't cost you a dime. You know what I mean? So... That said, the, the other part that I wanted to talk about, 2019 games, I tell y'all what, this is what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to hold that one for when Death Stranding comes out. I definitely want to talk about this because just to give y'all, just to give y'all a little pierce into the, into the future, take y'all through the hot tub time machine. I do want to talk about the fact that I in particular don't like the reception that gritty hardcore games are getting in 2019. We see the same old indie games and the same old tear jerkers being hated on, but we see games like again, days gone. Gears 5, Metro, um, you know what I'm saying? Even Borderlands gets some shade, you know? And not shade for the right reasons, shade about the gameplay. Uh, what else? Uh, Rage 2. Rage 2 is a phenomenal game, man. I was playing a little bit of that. I forgot to tell you, I was playing a little bit more Rage 2. Rage 2 it was slept on. But these games are getting shitted on. Because they're not tear jerkers or they're not. Yeah, they're not these tear jerker indies. And I don't like that, man. I don't like the prospects of that. When you have these game companies that go out there and they do these triple A games and they may take some risks in doing them. Right. And they don't bring in James Cameron or Jeff Goldblum to do the acting, the voice acting. They just want to give you raw, uncut gameplay and they get shitted on. Y'all get mad. When don't when everybody don't uh, does shit like Ghost Recon. When they do the service based games, because the service based games, even those those get even those though get even though those get shitted on. <laughs> I had to slow myself down. They still make money. Look at the first Destiny that got shitted on. Phenomenally well financially. Look at the first division. That got shitted on. Phenomenally well financially. And look at Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And one day, it outperformed Gears 5, right? It outperformed Gears 5. Even though Gears 5 wasn't Game Pass, I get that, but it was only out for one day. And it's breaking charts. And it's to the point to where NPD dropped a special video and said with it only being um, within the gaming market of 2019 for three months, they predict that Ghost Recon Breakpoint is going to be a top five game for 2019. Wow. But a lot of people don't like those service-based games, and I get it, but y'all got to understand the dynamic that we're in. I get why y'all don't like it. Y'all don't like it because the game day one doesn't come out complete. I understand that. But look what's happening. If you don't put seven years into a game and make it a tearjerker, or if it ain't some 8-bit indie, then it's getting shitted on. And we got to think about that. We truly got to think about that. How is this affecting the quality of games that we're going to get in the future? It's going to break it down to three games. You're either going to get a game that you got to wait seven years on, like a God of War or Red Dead Redemption 2, right? With all the bells and whistles and shit. Or Last of Us 2, right? You got to wait seven years for that shit. Or you're going to periodically get uh, some 8-bit indie. Or you're going to get a game like Ghost Recon. You're going to get a game a, a games as a service game. Is that what y'all truly want? If that's not what y'all truly want, then what y'all need to do is stop listening to fucking Metacritic. Metacritic is a, is a cancer. Stop listening to Metacritic when it comes to these single-player experiences. These games are fantastic. Rage 2 is fantastic. Metro Last Light is fantastic. There is no reason why these games shouldn't be propelled to the top. And I get it. The Devil May Cry, the Capcom, everybody loves Capcom all of a sudden. Capcom is going through a renaissance. I get that. But we're limiting the market. We're limiting the choices out here when we're listening to retarded freaking groups and I'm sorry to use the goofy groups like um, Metacritic Metacritic is not to tell I'll see y'all for games so I'm, I'm perturbed by it there were a lot of great games that came out this year 
Some were shitty, but there were a lot of great games that came out for this year. And a lot of y'all don't understand. Y'all cutting off y'all nose to spite y'all face. Y'all don't want to see the same shit over and over again. But when someone steps out of the box because Metacritic said it's shitty, then y'all follow Metacritic. Y'all following the idiot her. I got to stop that, man. Or that's, that's, that's what it's going to boil down to. A game that you'll like every seven years, and in between those every seven years, you're going to get eight-bit games, eight-bit in indies, and you're going to get these games as a service game. That's why you're getting them. That's exactly why you're getting them, because when you think outside of the box, when you do something like Rage 2 or Metro, and you're thinking outside of the, the box, you don't get rewarded. You don't. So you can't blame them. These companies, at the end of the day, they're here to make money. They got to make money to survive. Some use greedy tactics, but not all. You got to watch them, though. You do definitely have to watch them, but they got to keep the lights on. They got to feed the people. Fuck Metacritic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What I said, hey, y'all, hey, look, before I roll out, if y'all want to share y'all thoughts, man, we're taking live calls. 724-739-3612. Call in, man. Let me know what you think, what you think about all this. Because like I say, who cares what I think? Let me know. While y'all while we're waiting for our last call, um, anybody want to call in? Um, let's look at the chat. Homie D Almighty says respawn are gods of shooters. Yeah, they, they did do a good job. But everybody don't want, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people that want to play them, but everybody don't want to play games as a service. Right, D? Why all, why all single-player games have to be so severely story-driven? Why? Let's put it in a box. This is technology. You're not supposed to put technology in a box. You, you're supposed to take risks with technology. When you find a sweet spot, yeah, focus on that sweet spot, you know, to a degree and tweak it. But people got to want to take risks and nobody want to take risks anymore. Because Metacritic punishes them. Fuck, who, 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 when did, did we, did we care that much about Metacritic last gen and we did this gen? No, we didn't. I think the two most overrated entities this generation that have made gaming cancerous in a lot of ways, or the or the way we judge gaming cancerous was a Metacritic and B Digital Foundry. Those two entities fucked up gaming more than anything. Well, let's talk about it, y'all. Um, the Almighty Spartan God said, "Why when other games have it?" Devin in the box said, "I agree." Uh, the Almighty says. Apex Legends is way better than Fortnite, though. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ain't no, no lies detected. You know the meme. No lies detected. Um, Devin, Devin says, Borderlands is a typical 2K game. Same shit, a little bit better graphics. I, I, I beg to differ. I think, I think Borderlands 3 is a, is a great game. Let's do this. Just for shits and giggles. Let's do this. Let's switch this over. I was. I said, "Hey, look. You know I'm a liar. <laughs> you know my intellectual. You know my integrity is always in question. You know I'm a liar. Let's do this. Right one. Okay. Yep. This is Metacritic. Let me see what Borderlands got. Let's see what it got. Borderlands three. 78, wow, 82, oh my, oh my. <laughs> now the really, hey look, for Borderlands 3, that's insane. I find, <gasps> it has a higher Metacritic on PC than it does PlayStation. That's insane. PlayStation, y'all, and y'all putting yourselves in a box. Oh, what's going on here? You're putting yourselves in a box with your reviewers, man. Y'all need to, but it don't matter because play. Uh, Metacritic doesn't even matter. 
I wonder what it got on Xbox. This is this, Borderlands is at least on console an 85 game and it's going to be higher once it releases on Steam. Uh here, let's let's whoa shit. Try it this way because for some reason I think it's Let's do it this way, y'all. Oh, with my internet. Okay. Let me increase that for y'all. Control. Okay. And da 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 da. All right, so seventy-eight is eighty-two on Xbox. That's nah. Actually, Xbox is the best performing on on console. And that should be an 8.5. Y'all seen my streams. I, f I find that totally amazing. Amazing. All right, so let's try another game. Let's try Metro. Metro, which to me is a contender for game of the year. Metro Exodus. Ooh, y'all see that? An 82? Really? In 82? And again, I'm not saying 82 is the stuff is score, bad scores, but because these games, the only element that is missing from these games is the fact that they're not tearjerker story-driven. But these games excel in gameplay. That's absurd to me. But again, that's painting everything in a box. 82? Man, get the... That's absurd to me. What else? Uh, Rage 2. Rage 2 is a phenomenal game. Whoa! Rage 2 got... So you're trying to... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you're trying to tell me... That Rage One, which got an 81 meta PlayStation Nation. Y'all gotta answer this for your boy, man. But was this exclusive? No, it's on PlayStation 3. Holla, holla, holla. Y'all gotta y'all gotta explain this one to me, man. We're gonna well, let's talk a hey, PlayStation Nation. We got to talk about this. Okay, so I got an 81 on and what did y'all give Rage 2? Y'all gave Rage 2 a 60. You're trying to tell me that Rage 1. This is why I say Metacritic doesn't matter. You're trying to tell me that Rage 1 is better than Rage 2? When you have 43 opinions on this opposed to 37. Yo, we gotta talk. Ayo, hey, PlayStation Nation, can we talk about this? I get that the story driven games have become a creme de la creme at this generation, but don't paint yourselves in a box. This is gaming, this is technology. Other things have to live and breathe in order for gaming and technology to flourish. And at the very least, this PlayStation Nation do not follow these Metacritic scores because y'all robbing yourselves of great experiences. Because I get it. It's not that y'all see a bad Metacritic store, score and it influences your opinion of the game and you still play it. It influences your opinion of the game and you don't touch it. But y'all criticize it online. This is disgusting. This, this proves right here. This right here proves that Metacritic does not matter. I'm going to tell you. Rage 1 is a fucking horrible game. Rage 1 is of the worst games that I've played in decades. It's horrible. 
There is no way on God's green planet that range one is 14 points higher, let alone one point higher than range two. Homie Heath Stevens says, I don't care about Metacritic. I might use it to get under people's skin. And that's a lot of us, Heath. But unfortunately, a lot of our gaming brethren, they live and die by Metacritic. They live and die by Metacritic. That's disgusting. <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh my goodness. I can't, I did, I didn't know this before the show. Y'all getting MM2K's real life. What do y'all think about that, man? What are y'all thoughts on Metacritic? I get it that it's fun to beat up Microsoft with Metacritic, but I, I my opinion is, well, I'll tell you what, y'all y'all respond to my opinion again. Hit, leave me a voice message if you want to. Leave a voice message or call in live. Oh, that was the wrong link. I gave y'all the link to what I'm looking at. Cool, cool. Y'all get to, y'all get to have that. But let me know what y'all think. Straight up. Straight up, now tell me. There is the link to uh, the free messaging app where you can leave a chat or you can also, what the hell? Or you can, uh, let me see here. You can leave a chat in the free messaging app or you can call right now and give me your, I need to know, I need to know right now. Be honest, does Metacritic shape your decision on buying a game at all? Y'all gotta be honest. Cause I, let me be honest, I'm gonna be honest. We're all human, I, again, I have, no, I have no ego, there's no shame in my game. I am not going to lie. Scores have influenced me and making gaming decisions when they shouldn't have. Like for instance, I at the beginning of this generation, I did not care about an Xbox One or PlayStation 4. I almost didn't buy one. You know what made me buy? Because last generation, at the end of last generation, my preferred console, I kind of had a feeling that they were gonna have a lackluster generation. Why? Because of Connect. I had a feeling because of that. The last few years of the 360 generation, as far as Microsoft's, you know, hardcore contribution were dog shit. And what I noticed was that everybody was glacy. The 1080p 60 makes you a better gamer. That didn't happen overnight. For those of you that have uh, short-term memory, that was an initiative that was being worked on in the last few years of the prior generation. And it came to fruition this generation. So you can't be mad. I'm, I'm not mad at Sony for that. It's Microsoft's fault. In the last two years of last generation, I have like game informers and shit that, that'll prove so. You had PC gaming. Unreal Engine, particularly with Epic in the Unreal Engine. And you had Sony that was so focused on fidelity and what these new engines would do. They that, that was that was the talk of the town. And across the street, you had Microsoft talking about what? Connect. <laughs> so while everybody was putting their eggs in the basket of fidelity and graphics and compute units and polygons, Microsoft unwisely thought that because they they closed the market share so much from that pre from the sixth generation where Sony sold 150 million consoles and Microsoft only sold 24 million they thought because they ran neck and neck pretty much in console sales and they outdid them in software sales they thought that the tide was going to continue to turn in their favor so they left a sour taste in everybody's mouth focusing on connecting giving people the finger 
you know, their, their second party relationships, letting them go to shit while Sony was strengthening theirs again and coming up with their master plan. So because Microsoft was so focused on connect and everybody else was focused on polygons and compute units, they were able to convert mind share over polygons and compute units where Microsoft was lost in the sauce. So as Kinect comes out 2.0, the Xbox One comes out, and it's not the home run that Xbox thought it was going to be, then people began to shift. I remember me coming to this community. Hold on one second. Me coming to this community because some of my favorite podcasts that I was listening to, that's all they were talking about was polygon and compute units. And I cared about innovative experiences. Now, the closest to that, to me, was um, Division. From what I saw the Division, the interaction with the world and how they advertise it, I, I loved the notion of having a game that was going to create like a dynamic world for you that was going to change every time you interacted with it. And it was a living, breathing world that was like no other. And that's what they sold you on. And division quite wasn't that, you know what I'm saying? But they, and, and, it, and it was high tech based. So that it was something that I was like, Oh wow, man, this is fantastic. Division two still felt a little short of that, but it was closer than that. A lot more than division one is hopefully division three will nail that, that, utopia experience and a feeling that I got when I thought what the division one was going to be. Right. So that was the closest thing to me as far as the gameplay experiences I was looking for. Um, I, so therefore I wasn't worried about a console. I was just going to do a new PC. I saw nothing that was piquing my interest. All I saw was polygon and compute units on one side and I saw connect on the other side. And I said, I'll just go PC. You know, I'll go where the polygon and compute units can't be matched. And it doesn't look like that either game maker is going to focus on the type of shit that I want. What stopped me from going full PC was playing the division and seeing all the cheating that was happening on the division, you know, or all, yeah, all the cheating that was happening in PC gaming, period. So then I decided to get an Xbox One. And... Again, now I going to a sub I've, I've gone from wanting to invest in the top of the line experience for polygon and compute units to the least of the line for polygon and compute units. And I'm going to tell you when you go do PC gaming, going from top of fidelity back down to bottom is a tough pill to swallow. And as I heard this talk about 1080p 60 makes you a better gamer and Microsoft games were 900 or 720p 30. It worried me. Now I'm going to bring this on home. What does I got to do with the discussion at hand? I then heard about quantum break. I love remedy games. I love everything that they do. And I said, I was going to get quantum break day one until I heard that it was going to be running at this shitty fidelity quote unquote and everybody made it sound like it was shitty fidelity so i said well as someone that's a pc gamer i can't do i'll wait till it becomes a bargain bin item and that was a big mistake that i made because that was the first checkerboard game and it looked and it played fantastic um and um it needed support but that's why reviews matter. I listened to the reviews. I listened to the, the, the Bibble Babble out there. I was solely invested in Destiny and Division. And I was eyeing Quantum Break, but I really didn't. It wasn't like at the top of my to-do list, but it was there in the, like the top five. And when I heard about the quote-unquote shittiness of the game, I decided not to get it. So again, I'm human too. I've learned over the years, though, not to ever make that mistake ever, 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 ever again. MM2K of today is a lot wiser even of MM2K in 2015. And so I just want to convey that message. 
That Metacritic is bullshit. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. This proves it. And it's not, it's not the idea of doing an aggregate of scores that I have a problem with. Metacritic is not a straight up aggregate of scores. They make some reviewers more reliable than other reviewers. And some of those choices are bewildering, like US Gamer. Somebody in US Gamer must be on the board of Metacritic or something like that. Because US Gamer is the most mind-boggling group of gamers that I've ever seen in my life. Like when it came to Gears 5, they rated Gears 5. They, they shitted on Gears 5 for it being Gears, but they applauded Uncharted, for, Uncharted 4 for being Uncharted. So they're not consistent there. Then I heard that they did some shady shit with um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, granted, I don't like Horizon Zero Dawn. I don't like it. But I went and watched the review, and some of the shit they were saying about Horizon Zero Dawn did not make sense to me, even for somebody that don't like Horizon Zero Dawn. So across the board, U.S. Gamer, they're, if you want to include them in, the, in an aggregate of scores, fine. But to give them a boost... You know, to make their, their, their scores way heavier is crazy to me. So that's why I say fuck Metacritic. I don't say fuck an aggregate of scores because, you know, it, it may be worthwhile a little bit to look at an aggregate of scores where I, even though I don't think it should, it should foster your gaming decision, you should find a reviewer or a set of reviewers that agree with you and your gaming choice. Like I would pick your five top games. I would pick five games that you love Pick three games that you hate and go look for people that feel around the realm, uh, uh, you know, a few points higher or lower where you're at. Then, you know, you have a reviewer that agrees with you. But even as an, it's not a straight up aggregate of scores. So I think Metacritic needs to go and I think Digital Foundry has to go. I think Digital Foundry has lost its relevancy especially after the incident with King Thrash. I don't I don't think I don't think they're relevant anymore. Fuck them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck them. That's my thoughts. But yeah, this is and this proves it, man. This is disgusting. Did anybody ever play Rage 3? Rage 3 is horrible. It's a horrible game. Rage 2 isn't horrible. Rage 2 is getting a 67 because it's not heavily story driven. These reviewers want to put you in a box and say, if you're playing a AAA game, it has to be a tearjerker or it doesn't belong over a seven. Like, and it's not just, and again, even Sony games are suffering from this. Days Gone. Because Days Gone wasn't a tearjerker, it got a 72. So you see how even some of the PlayStation based reviewers are even doing in their own system of choice. They're putting you in a box. This is what I'm saying where you can have your own biases, but you have to be a value. You have to have, you have to be agnostic and how you do your evaluation. If I'm a PlayStation guy, I'm looking at that. Every AAA game doesn't have to be a tearjerker. It doesn't have to be a tearjerker. Fatal Charade in the chat says, Days Gone didn't get a 72 because it wasn't a tearjerker. It got a 72 because it was a bug riddled mess. No. It was a bug riddled. No, I, I, when I say no, I will say it was a bug riddled mess. <laughs> Absolutely. The first seven games. I mean, the first seven days, it got a, a, or first six days, it got an update every day. And if the score was based off of that fatal, I would agree with you. But go back and read the reviews. People, are, the reviewers are focused on the story. 
I don't know what the character when I don't. That has to, what the fuck does that have? Why does that have to be? Uh, the character does. I don't feel like I can have a beer and share some taco dip with the character. Who cares? It's a game. Play it. You watch Netflix. Why does a tearjerker have to be the tell-all be-all of every game? I can't. I. I don't feel like I can have a beer and have nacho, nachos with this with, with the characters. Who cares? I don't. I don't. Now to your point, fatal. Yes, I didn't. I. My impressions of Days Gone from a gameplay standpoint, even earlier on within the first ten hours, are not high. But I just don't like this litmus of it has to be a tearjerker. I. I if that was their sentiment and why they rated it so low then I, you wouldn't hear anything from me about it. But Fatal, go check those reviews. Go check those reviews. And D Almighty reasonably points out, once she got mad, Deacon was checking out his wife's booty. Now, I, I thought it was silly for people to change their picks to that, but I get, I get the sentiment. They were pick, they, this is what these reviewers do, y'all. They will find the most minuscule thing to not like about a game if it doesn't fit under this siloed litmus and then they'll make up shit. Like they can't sit there and say, you know what? I'm biased in my review mechanisms and or I'm on a time frame. So therefore, even though my thoughts are superficial and I know it, I can't say that. So I'm going to make up some shit. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like the fact that he was looking at his wife's ass. So I give it a five. That's what that was all about. You couldn't explain your score. So you had to come up with something. I see it all the time. Now, again, I am the first to admit that Ghost Recon Breakpoint isn't for everybody. I call it the Rambo Simulator. If you ever wanted a game where you're in a cat and mouse situation like Rambo First Blood, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is the game for you. If you want more bells and whistles and boom, boom, kabooms, go to fucking Ghost Recon Wildlands. They're updating that thing every three minutes. So you got a Ghost Recon that'll satisfy different gamers. But because Ghost Recon Breakpoint was not, was not a tearjerker, story-driven game, then they said, oh, it's so repetitive. Oh, it's this and that. Oh, it's they Meanwhile, the other games that are repetitive, they applaud. When you fight the same type of bosses, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name no names, but you fight the same type of bosses. They just different colors. They're just different colors. That's not repetitive. You see what I'm saying? You use the same tactics. They're just a different color. That's not repetitive. So with that said, the difference between that game and Ghost Recon Breakpoint is Ghost Recon Breakpoint was not a tearjerker, okay? Now, with that being said, I get it that the game is not for everybody, but then you had people, that at least was an honest critique of the game. That's not what you're getting. You got people that said that the game was unadulterated with microtransactions and it was pay to win. And that couldn't have been the farthest thing from the truth. And I'm glad, and that partially got smacked down rather quickly due to efforts like mine, even though the homie Randolph Thor didn't like the game, at least he was honest about that. I, I saw the solid rev had said some stuff about it. You know what I'm saying? But again, because these games are not tear jerkers, people are making up stuff to validate their shallow takes of the game. And there is a reason why. And that reason why solely is I was listening to IGN and then I'm going to go on this. And again, if you guys want to call in, call in. 
talk to your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about all this. But let me just, and you can call in 724-739. Uh-oh, hold on, I can't even see my own phone number. 724-739-3612. Call in, give me your thoughts on all this. I'm going to say this. I was listening to IGN, and I got to give credit to IGN. IGN said, hey, look. We've been kicking Xbox's ribs in. Let's stop. Let's pull back a little bit. We are supposed to be an Xbox podcast. Let's leave all the Xbox rib kicking into MM2K, right? So they so they pull back a little bit. And so they've been a little bit more favorable to Xbox. I got to give them credit for that because they were all about the Xbox rib kicking business, right? Very lucrative business, right? <laughs> With that being said, no, um, all jokes aside, I, I, I give credit to them. So their opinions about things, even though, again, it's just I listen to them solely for information purposes, but it listening to the rest of the filler of the show is uh, a lot more bearable, right? Um, because it is a lot more bearable, I now can say that I enjoy watching the show along with getting my information. That said, when Justin Tyrell of IGN was giving his analysis of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, he said some things that were key to me and that I want to leave with you guys. He said that when he was reviewing the game, there are some things that he, that there's a ways, there's ways, there's certain ways he didn't play the game due to time constraints. He didn't put it on a more advanced level. He didn't stake out things. He just hop, he just hopped in chopper to chopper to chopper and he played it solo. Now again, Certain, you can play any game, open world games you should be able to play any way you want, right? And that's why they're open world. But just like any game, there's certain things, there's a certain mechanic to the game to play it, to get the maximum enjoyment out of it. If I boot up God of War, and I want to just throw my axe at a tree, I don't want to engage the enemies, I just want to throw my axe at the tree for it to chop down. And the cheat tree never chops down, so I get on Reddit and I say, God of War is dog shit because when I throw my axe, the tree doesn't fall down. The game wasn't designed for that. So, of course, you're not going to get maximum enjoyment out of the game. Ghost Recon Breakpoint, for all intents and purposes, is a Rambo simulator. You have to take your time with the game. It's like fine wine, baby. Take a little sip to smell, smell the ambiance. You crawl through the jungle. You're engaging enemies tactically. You're taking them out. Upgrading your character, upgrading your weaponry. It's cat and mouse. It's survival, but they dropped you in a big ass landscape in order to survive. And in order for you to enjoy the tactical sense of it, you have to raise the difficulty. Because if you normally play a Ghost Recon game or a Tom Clancy game at that, normal difficulty ain't going to cut it. They did make it to where it gave entry points to the casual gamer. So normal is too easy for a typical Tom Clancy game player. You got to play on advanced and above or you're going to lose that entire tactical sense. So if you don't play the game the way it is supposed to be played because of time restraints, how good is your review? I thought that was telling. So I want to leave y'all with that before I go to this last voicemail. I want to leave y'all to that with that. Understand that not only is Metacritic a piece of garbage because it's not just a straight up aggregate, but even before you go to these big reviewers, understand that they're trying to come at you first. It's, it's a race. It's not a marathon like how it is for your boy MM2K. I do the journal reviews. I dropped one earlier this morning where I'm taking my time with the game, but because I know it's going to take me some time 
to be done with the game because I'm playing it right. I'm savoring it like that fine wine. I'm giving you guys updates. I'm giving you weekly updates. I'm giving you journal entries where I think I'm going to re rename it or recategorize it. MM2Ks as I play. AIP reviews. So you're not lost in the sauce. You're not waiting forever. I'm giving you impressions as I'm playing the game. I'm breaking it down for you. But I'm not giving up how you're supposed to play the game. So I just wanted to drop that, that dime on you guys. When it comes to these 2019 games, don't go by Metacritic. Don't go by a reviewer unless it's a trusted reviewer, unless it's a trusted source. That again, you've done that five up, three down method where you pick five games and find somebody that likes the same five games that you like and feels the same way about the three the three games that you don't like. When you found that, you're in a good sweet spot. But besides, if you're on the fence about a game and your money's tight, but besides that, just get the, get the damn game yourself. There's too many options. With that said, let's go to our last voicemail. Uh, let's check it out. Let's go. Hey, MMTK. It's uh, Heath Stevens. Um, yeah, I don't think Game Pass is going to be able to, to make it. They're going to have to change some things up. I think Day and Date was a complete – they should have saved that for later. But all these journalists and all these assholes out here saying this stuff about games, most of it is just woke SJW shit. <laughs> you know, they just want something to bitch about and they just write stuff for clicks. I think that's the big thing. Later, man. <laughs> big up to the homie Heath Stevens, man. He raw and uncut, man. Um, we kind of talked about this in, in Heath's live call. Um, I think Game Pass is great for gamers as long as the content backs it up. If the content can't back it up, then... Who, you know, who, who cares, right? So, and I, but we're, we're again, to his point earlier again, I do believe that Sony doesn't need day and date right now. I'm whole, I wholeheartedly agree with that. But I think down the line, they may need to do it if subscription models go, if, if they start to succeed. Again, like I tell you guys, you got to remember, I give you all the, the Fortune 500 world of this, Okay. Whenever you're a Fortune 500 company, not only do you compete against your competitors, but you got to compete against yourself. You're rated over how well you've exceeded year over year against previous years. So if 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 if, if, if Sony is still stuck around sixty dollars a share and they're still hovering around twenty two billion, but meanwhile Microsoft is growing fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty, and they're in the thirty billion range, and everybody else is going up, going up in revenue, and and, and, and Sony is still just bringing in twenty two. Well, I, I, don't, I hate to say, it, but their but their revenue growth is flat. That's going to affect their stock price. And if your stock, I don't care how much money you make, if your stock price is at sixty dollars on Monday, but by Wednesday. Say it's at a dollar or less, you're shutting your doors by Thursday. That's just the way the stock market works. So Sony has to keep an eye on it. I think they're doing right by building the infrastructure. Um, they decided to go with Azure, which was a funny way of doing it, but they've done it anyway. With that being said, you can't be mad at um, Sony for that. And again, if day and date works with Uplay Plus, if it works with uh, Microsoft or anybody else that does it, Google, if the Stadia does it, then they will have to do it and they will succeed. And I think that they'll probably do better than anybody else with it. Because again, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, their games are considered more precious. But with that said, thank you to the homie Heath Stevens for that voicemail. I appreciate it. And I'm a shout out to the chat. Shout out to Heath Stevens. Thank you so much for your support, brother. I appreciate it. Devin got the box. Same to you, man. I appreciate it. And hey, my Nightbot, stop fucking with D Almighty Nightbot. I'm going to take care of that night. I keep saying that. I'm sorry, D. I'm sorry about that, y'all. My Nightbot keeps trying to backhand people for caps and all stupid, silly stuff, right? Um, let me see here. Who else we got in here? D Almighty, big ups to him. We got Fatal Charade. Thank you, Fatal Charade, for your comment. Uh, let me see who else we got. Um, I think we had Dirk Griggity in here. Big ups to Dirk. 
Oh, we had a lot of activity in this chat, man. Y'all making it hard for me to <laughs> see what's going on. Uh, yeah, we had Dirk Griggity. We had the homie um, um, 706 Gamer. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of y'all, man. Big, big, big things happening in the PNTS network, the uh, broadband bullies and hard knock digital culture. Me and Z are putting our brain power together. We're, we're, we're trying to come up with something. Um, and so, you know, all this stuff is going to go live in November. So with that said, stay tuned to this channel and a lot more for more information. I appreciate everybody coming through. Thank you so much for making this another successful podcast. And with that said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.